Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 8.3. We're going to define and explain the importance of a limiting reactant, also called a limiting reagent. We're going to define percent yield and explain why chemical reactions do not have 100% yield. Calculate the percent yield in a chemical reaction and st solve stoichiometry problems involving heat. So let's hop to it. Definition, a limiting reactant controls the amount of product form. If I have six slices of bread, how many bologna sandwiches can I make? Double bologna is best. Now, how many bologna sandwiches can I make? Now, you're a sucker if you say three. Ah, uh, you don't know how much bologna you have, so ah, uh, ha, ha. It depends on number of bologna slices. I misspelled bologna. Okay, so if I have six slices of bread and 100 slices of bologna, then I can make three sandwiches. If I have six slices of bread and one bologna sandwich, then I could make a half of one, I suppose, if we're going with that. So we want to do this. So what is a limiting reactant? So this is what you have to be able to do with pictures. Before the reaction is started, notice I've got red ones and green ones. And they react to form this guy. But notice I have these ones left over. Right? So... If I add more reds, add more excess reagent, that's what's left over. If I add more reds, I won't get any more of the red greens. I want red greens. That's my product I'm looking for. So if I add more red, it won't do anything. So the greens control the amount of product formed. If I add more greens, I'll get more red greens. Okay. So that's what it looks like in the picture. Um, percent yield equals part over total, So because percent is always part over total. Part is what you got in the lab. Total is what stoic, that's the math problem, says you should have. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my lab answer over my math answer times 100%. So let's see. Calculate the percentage yield of 85 grams of methane. That's methane. Um, react with excess oxygen to make 93.2 grams of carbon dioxide. So notice I have 85.0 grams of this and I have 93.2 grams of this. Now what's weird is I'm going to take my reactant and convert it into the one I already have a number for. This is my lab number. So now I have to do the math to convert CH4 into CO2. So 85.0 grams of CH4, that's methane, times dividing bar, 82 hey, grams of CH4, and one mole of CH4. So little g stands for grams, little g stands for go to the periodic table. One carbon, four hydrogens are 16.05. Now I'm in moles of CH4, and I hate you moles of CH4. But where was I going again? Oh, CO2. Now I can't go right into grams of CH CO2. I have to first go through moles. Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. This is nice because it's balanced already for us, right? So how many moles of CO2? One. How many moles of CH4? One. So notice my grams are canceled, my moles are canceled. I'm in moles of CO2, but remember I want to go into grams. So I hate you moles of CO2, and I want to cancel it. Moles CO2. And I want to go into grams of CO2. The number one goes with moles, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. So two oxygens, 32, plus 12.01 is 44.01. Now, I don't think I said this very well. I said always go through moles. Moles over moles use coefficients. Okay, well, luckily I have my calculator handy. So this will tell me how much I should get. So 85 divided by 16.05 times 1 divided by 1 times 44.01. Oops, I put 04. 80, oops, clear. 85 divided by 16.05 times 44.01 is 233 that's weird okay 233.07 grams of CO2 or with what I'm given here 233 grams would be just fine okay so this is how much I should get so remember percent is actual what did you actually get over theoretical what should I get times 100 percent. So my actual yield was 93.2. My theoretical yield is 233 times 100 percent. Put that in my calculator. 93.2 divided by answer gives me 30, um, 
gives me 40.0%. Okay, so again, actual, what did I actually get? That's my lab answer. Let's do another one. 1.85 grams of aluminum. Notice how I like to label where these go. 1.85 grams of aluminum uh, reacts and 2.12 grams of copper form. 2.12 grams. What is the percent yield? So again, this will be my lab answer. This is how much I actually made, and I'm going to convert aluminum into copper. One point, uh oh, I bet I didn't balance it. I did not. So I have one aluminum on the left, two aluminums on the right. Two. I have one copper on the left, I have one copper on the right. Whew. I have three sulfates on the right. I need three sulfates on the left. That messed up my coppers. There we go. So now I'm going to start with 1.85 grams of aluminum times dividing bar. Grams of aluminum. I always go through moles. Moles of aluminum. Little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. Hate you, moles of aluminum. Now where do I go? Okay, I know I want to go to copper. Can I go right to grams of copper? Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. I can't go into grams until I first go through moles. Moles over moles use coefficients. Copper's coefficient is 3, aluminum's is 2. Now I want to get out of moles of copper and go into, finally, grams of copper. Now I have grams and moles, so I'm going to use one mole here. One mole equals the go to the periodic table number of copper. And copper is 63.55, I hope, because I didn't actually go to the periodic table. So now I'm in the unit that I want. So let's get out the calculator and do the math. 1.85 divided by 26.98 times 3 divided by 2 times 63.55. And I got 6.56, 6.54, pardon me, grams of copper. That's what I should get. Okay. Now I only got 2.12 percent yield is actual. What did I actually get? 212 over theoretical. Theoretical means what should I get? Oh, that's that. Times 100 percent. So my actual amount is 2.12. My theoretical amount is 6.54 times 100 percent. 2.12 divided by 6.54 times 100 is 32.4 percent. Now, why don't we get 100% yield? Now, you should actually, if you get 100% yield, you probably lied in your results. So, why don't we get 100% yield? Particles need to collide to react, and that may not happen to everyone. So, if I want A plus B to yield AB, I need A to actually hit B. Well, what if they're going in different directions and they never actually hit? Aw, what if you never find your true love? Aww. So, that may not happen to everyone. Some reactants and products have transfer issues. So if you're trapped in the container, so if I have a beaker, oh, look at my artwork, look at this, man, and I'm pouring stuff out into this, some of it is always left over. Okay, So you may think you're pouring it all in there, but you can't recover it. And sometimes side reactions take place. So if A plus B yields AB, but along comes C and goes, I love you, B, I'm going to take you away, then you won't get as much AB as you'd like. Okay, So you need to be able to list the, th the three reasons why you don't get 100% yield. So, sad and lonely, trapped, side, side reaction. In combustion reactions, so changing gears here, the products are more than CO2 and H2O. Light and heat are also products. Heat is actually a product in pretty much every aura reactant and in pretty much every reaction. Heat can be given a coefficient. So let's see what that looks like. So if I have delta H is positive 195.3, what the positive means, if you recall, is that means heat is on the left-hand side. What the 195.3 kilojoules means, it's 195.3 kilojoules. The coefficient is 195.3, and it is kilojoules. And we're going to treat that just like any other substance in a reaction. How much heat is required to use 58.6 grams of potassium chlorate? 58.6 grams of KClO3, and I want to change it into heat. That's my goal. Okay. Now, potassium chlorate, hopefully you remember that's chlorate. This is chloride. That's oxygen. So let's take a little gander. I hate you grams of potassium chlorate. And I go, always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles of potassium chlorate. Now I need to add up the molar mass of chlorate. 16 times 3 is 48. Chlorine is 35.45. 
and 39.10 is potassium, so that is 122.55. And then I'm going to hate moles of KClO3, and I want to go into kilojoules. Now, I'm not going to go into moles of kilojoules, I'm just going to go into kilojoules, and I need a relationship between these two. The relationship is still the coefficients, okay? So moles over kilojoules, or kilojoules over moles, use coefficients. So two of these equal 195.3 kilojoules. That's what I want, is how much heat. Heat is kilojoules. I'm finito. 58.6 divided by answer times 195.3 divided by 2 is 46.7. Notice the only units I have left are kilojoules. Okay. If 9.87 liters of O2 forms, how much heat was required? So 9.87 liters of O2. Now I'm going to take this and I'm turn it into heat again. Hate you liters of O2. I'll always go through moles. Now if you notice, we did all these other problems and they were a lot longer. And these are a little bit shorter because you go right into kilojoules. You don't have to go through moles of kilojoules, you just go through kilojoules. So if I have moles and kilojoules, the coefficients give me that equivalency. Okay, So 195.3 kilojoules is equivalent to 3 moles of O2. So I'm really multiplying by 1 because these two equal each other. Like if I multiplied by 2 and 2, that would be multiplying by 1. 9.87 divided by 22.4 times 195.3 divided by 3 is 28.6, uh, 28.7 kilojoules. Now I want to focus on this again. I say what I do here, but remember, this is on the bottom, it's a divided by. This is on the bottom, it's a divided by. Everything on the bottom is divided by. Don't fall for those silly parentheses things and get it wrong. Review. Percent is part of a total, times 100%. Total is from Stoic. Treat heat like a reactant in our product. Always go through moles, 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 and always go through snow days. Toodles.